Today at 7 p.m. at the velodrome, the the production which is called Operación Concha, Operation Golden Shell, and in this press conference, they're going to be able to talk and present the film. The director Antonio Cuadri, the producer of the film Jose Portela. And I'm going to say the entire cast, but there's a good representation of the cast. Barbara Goenaga, Barbara Mori, Alucian Vivanco, Sunak Sugalde, Carra Elejalde, Jorge Moya, and Ramon Aguirre. All of them, as always, they'd be glad to answer whatever questions you deem pertinent to ask. So we can start. Seems that someone's raised their hand. Hi, good afternoon to all of you. I would like to ask whether the idea of making this film stems out of pure coincidence at a dinner at the San Sebastian Film Festival. And then I would also like to ask Carra Elejalde. It seems that there's no comedy that can't be without you, whether you've picked up uh, the rhythm of comedy or whether the comedy or the rhythm of comedy uh, no, it's the producers. The producers, they want to get Carrera uh, Jalde. They're going to make a lot of money, like with Ocho Apellidos Vascos. That's it. And the other question wasn't for me, was it? No, good. Well, keep doing what you're doing. OK, good afternoon. There was a bit about that. There was a little. In, in the year 2010, we started to sort of, the idea emerged, and this is a hard-headed approach in a very endearing way here in the Basque country, but it's as if you were from the middle of Bilbao and very boastful. You've got a big, beautiful film which bring about a smile to the San Sebastian Film Festival within the San Sebastian Film Festival, and it got Pacho Tejeri and I to do what we've tried to do and in a very endearing way, a story which has been slow-cooked, shall we say, wagering in favor of the characters, because that's where the plot lies amongst all the characters. And we close the circle by coming here. I'm not too sure whether we've contributed or made people smile today, or one of the smiles on making people smile, but that's the idea behind this. Next question. And in order to finish, the Latin American Forum gave us, in 2013, was the first co-production forum organized by the Latin American Europa, European Forum. And I remember we were with that story, we thought, wouldn't it be great that apart from within the festival, there was Latin American uh, representation, and that's how it happened. So I think on the third, 2013 was was the end, of, shall we say, which finally made the project come to light. Next question, please. This is going to be quick, hey. This is going to be quick. I think it would be very interesting for the actors and the cast tell us uh, what's the experience of living cinema or film within a film festival, that double play on words almost, or double background plot. I'm not too sure. Jodi Molla, for example. Tell us about living films within a film festival. Living film within film. Well, I understand you. Don't worry, I understand you. Living film within film, yes, of course. Yeah, that's what the film's about, film within film. But as we are all also making a film upon film within film, and that's what I was thinking about, how many, how many people or how many films are we making at the same time? I like films that uh, deal with films. And, and then the making of, for example, people love that. People, as I, they ask you, they say, hey, and when you get in bed, what happens when you get in bed on the scene? I said, what happens? What's going to happen? There are 40 guys looking at you all around you, and it's 8 a.m. in the morning. It, what happens is you've got to do it, and you've got to do it. Oh, but do you get a hard-on? No, I don't get a hard-on. Gee, how am I going to get a hard-on? So therefore, a lot of curiosities emerge of what happens when you make when you film when you make a film. Here we don't explain the shooting of the film per se. 
porque, porque eso ya sería posterior Because that would be subsequent that would happen later but it's how to set up a film and it's also explaining en este contexto en and in this context and in this comedy como estos how these characters no, who are la vida paliable, picturesque no? uh, people to uh, set everything up in order to rip someone off it's a film which is endogamic uh, several journalists have asked me different things today one said whether it was a critique on the Belgium Film Festival. I think the film festival is another location through which we characters walk through. There's no opinion and no assessment is made as regards the San Sebastian Film Festival. I think that the film festival in San Sebastian, unless it's just another protagonist in the film, it's a location through which the characters go through. Another thing is what we do, and I think that can be noticed a certain critique each and every one of us of what our profession is we are the ones we're not producers nor directors we're actors so therefore it's been up to the actors that we've had to in the case of Barbara as a makeup artist Luminas as a director in my case as a producer Elde for example uh, he sets up a brothel and, and there is a bit of a critique there and a risky critique at the same time quite belligerent vis-a-vis uh, -vis ourselves but not so in the case of the festival. Do you agree with me? Okay, good. You agree with me? Quadri, yes, several journalists have mixed all of that up. I said, oh, Jesus, Jesus, no, 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 we're going down the wrong, we're going down the wrong path with that approach. Unax? Well, I don't know what else to add. Well, yeah, the film talks about, uh, uh, it's a great hoax, and my character the main part within the story and the credibility of the credit, the other characters were more, more credible within the whole hoax. And that's all I can say about my character, because it would be an absolute spoiler. But as the film says, nothing is what it seems, and people have got to be very careful. And there are several twists in the film which are very interesting. And one of the things that is highlighted in one of the critiques is the script is a solid, iron-like clad uh, script and everything fits in at the end and I think that's very interesting. Barbara? <laughs> yeah, we've been doing this all day long. We don't know who speaks first. Well, in my case, I think everything has been very well said so far. What I really liked was that they trusted me in doing uh, playing a character very different to the ones that I've done up until now, and I had a great, uh, f a lot of fun. There's a moment in the characters which is a good idea. These are people that are that are always trying uh, to be unscrupulous. And there's something as if they're very tender and you want to take them home at the end of the day. So I think it's very beautiful, that, that double play on, on things as regards the characters, and that's all I can say. I don't know what else to say, the truth be said. Barbara? Well, it was an ex a marvelous experience to be able to be here, here in Spain filming for the first time with this marvelous cast with Antonio and the truth is we've had a great time. I enjoyed my days here in San Sebastián. We also filmed in the Canary Islands. My participation in this film for the first time I sing a song and that was something that I enjoyed doing very much. Very thankful to this experience and I hope that you like the film very much and make you laugh a lot. A Ramón. A Ramón. Well, in this play on simulation and, and fooling and, and lies, and my character is the one that who has a, a very brutal, shall we say, dramatic uh, load. It's very good to work on. The, you, you've got to make it, got to fine tune it because you're talking to one guy, but for no one else to listen and so that nobody else can hear you, the audience and the spectator, you've got to fool them as well. So therefore, there are all many different levels and I think that we've got to be I think we've done it right it's, it's a very beautiful territory I'd love uh, to be participating in this film the script which is marvelously well written by Pacho Tellería who I wanted to mention too by the way
My character is Oscar. He's Mexican. He is the boyfriend of, of Mara Escalante, who could come to get, uh, today, one of the actresses, very important in the cast, and I'm her partner, who's the millionaire that they want to rip off, so therefore, that's all I can say, really, because otherwise I'll, I'll give you a complete, it would be a complete spoiler for the film. Okay. Next question, please. Above, uh, before I say congratulations for the film, I had a great time watching it. My question is for all of you, I'd like to know what film or what production you, is in a drawer and was never premiered and you'd like to uh, get involved in. What production? Es un, ah, es uh, un, a project which is in a drawer. Dijo. Okay, okay, this is a riddle. Okay, what project in is in a drawer? And abrir, we would like to open up the drawer to participate in that project. There was a film that was offered to me once, which was called Fray Ortiz. It was a, it was a great script. And Fernando Bauluz died and it wasn't made. And they offered me the friar, Friar Ortiz, and it was a great character. And yes, if you refer to that, things that have got stuck in the past that we couldn't do, I would have liked to have. But Perico Carvajal might take and listen to me, and when we can do that film, Fray Ortiz. Uh, Friar Ortiz. I thought it was a great script. I'm not too sure whether in a drawer, but in a box. Or on a computer archive. Published film for children that I would like. I hope I can fool some producer or someone wants to make that film. Portela, what have you got? in your box. We're waiting, we're all unemployed now. What have you got? <laughs> what did you say about it? We've got a several different things. Tell us, tell us, tell us. Uh, is there a character my age for that film, for that project? Barbara, when she talked about me, she was. Uh, I was asked this morning in the view, can there be uh, Operation Gold Shield, the sequel? We said we can't say that because we would be revealing what happens with the characters in the film. You've got to watch the film first. Let's see if they come out alive. I see. Very, very well mannered. We could say. Uh, Operation Gold eh, Shield number two, no or the sequel. I don't know that there's going to be Operation Gold Shield number two. I would like to, you, to to be able to repeat with this cast would be great. Eh, I don't want to sort eh, of... Una cosa que antes se ha comentado, no but sé, there is one thing that it was mentioned, I don't know what it was, but... And someone has said, I don't know whether Conchita said this, to laugh at ourselves, the producer, the director, and so on and so forth. I always say that if in every profession we did the same thing, it would be much better for everyone's day-to-day -day lives. What we have done is to laugh at ourselves. They say, what happens? Our profession, uh, are there more people that rip other people off? No, that there are other professions. I'm not going to mention any, nevertheless, but obviously we know that there are many more people who rip other people off. But we've got the capacity to laugh at ourselves, I think, because otherwise, if we don't laugh at ourselves, who's going to do it? And if people enjoy it at the same time, well, that's what we've tried to make with this film. Hi, over here. All of you have highlighted the script. I would like to ask Antonio, how was that relationship with Pacho? And then Barbara, as well, who a few years back we saw Bypass, where you worked with Pacho. Uh, you presented that, that in this first film festival. What, what was it like uh, meeting him again, and how was the relationship on this occasion? And he's a scriptwriter, and he hasn't directed you directly. Thank you. Well, the relationship with Pacho has been excellent. He started to... I said before, in 2011 or the end of 2011 or beginning of 2012, the, the basic plot of the film, and as of there, 
And what I have tried to do is to and certain characters try to give give it my side of things, collective work with him. Jose Portelo doesn't want to figure as a co-screenplay scriptwriter, but um, he could have appeared as well. His reasons, he's got his reasons for that, and we respect that. But it's been a teamwork between the three of us, which was very interesting and very beautiful. And, and I think that's the base of all this, to see from version one until version nine of the script and how we shot things and based upon a foundation that worked very well and to enrich it slowly but surely over the years uh, waiting for it to settle and in very endearing towards each of the characters because the plot was there but I from the press notes that I had to write for your colleagues here in the forum, Latin American forum in 2013, as Jose Portela mentioned, we highlighted it was a character-driven piece and preparing the way for the advent of the most fabulous thing, that is a great actress, actresses and actors portraying this story with marvelous contributions in their characters, in their dialogues, in the plot that they have all lived in each and every one of them. Ramon Axkan through Carra, Jordi, obviously Ramon, Barbara, Alosia, Mara, that is to say, they were at rehearsals. I always agree, not mechanical type rehears rehearsals like a theater. No, an Italian sort of around a table and work. We signed it, Pacho and myself, but the truth is we have to recognize, quite honestly, the, 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 uh, the creativity and the talent of all of these casts because what I've tried to not get in the way as much as possible, uh, when you're surrounded by actors such as these, some of them are directors at the same time, that is to say, they are scriptwriters. It's a privilege and an experience of one of the most beautiful of my professional uh, career so far. Truth be said, well, it's what Antonio was saying. Pacho Tejeria, for me, humor isn't something that's easy. A humor, a humoristic film that comes out, and not to be ridiculous, but you really laugh at it. For me, as a spectator, is not an easy task. And the truth is, when they said that the script was Pacho Tejeria's, it was a seal of approval, of guarantee. But he does comedies, but he does very good comedies, and very, very fine tuning it. And also, the opportunity that was given with Bypass, I was a girl who was, I was a bit uh, preppy, and, and Portela and Antonio La Quadri, they thought it would be a good idea that I could uh, portray a different uh, per character because I jump at the deep end and I do, I make videos because I, I, I do that at home on Instagram, for example. I do it myself and all of a sudden this character comes out and it's true, it's something that I like very much to do thing very, very different uh, uh, characters. I couldn't do that with Pacho, but I could do it now with his script, with the production of Portela and the, and the, the direction of Antonio. But um, I think it has, he's been writing for many, many years, but I think he's one of the best uh, screenplay writers that we have in comedy, Pacho. And there's a, a slight tribute to Aitor Mazor. Yes, I didn't want to mention that. Yes. That's what I thought about as well. Well, you don't have to mention it. You don't have to mention it. You don't mention it. Any further questions? The character that I portray uh, was going to be done by Aitor. Aitor and I were very good friends. He had this. We had the same rep representative manager. We we'd been together since, together in Airbag, and he was a great actor, guy with an incredible uh, sense of humor, a lot of character, a lot of personality. So there is a wink, shall we say, to Aitor's figure. There is a gesture toward him by my friend Quadri. But but let's see the film and. I'm not going to tell you what's going on here, really. I don't want to go into depth. Any further questions?
Well, it's 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Watch the film. Thank you very much.